this video we're going to look at the Hungarian uprising in 1956. So again we're going to look at the story, the consequences and the importance. So in terms of the story, so Hungarian people began to protest against poor living conditions and shortages in 1956. Um, Khrushchev, who had criticised Stalin, it seemed to be a leader who was going to give people more freedoms in these countries, but he sends Soviet troops to restore order and he gets rid of the leader Rokosi and replaces him with Prime Minister Imre Nash, who on the face of it is going to try and create more reform in Hungary. So the new leader introduces several reforms, including ending the one party state. So historically, obviously, you've just got the Communist Party and and we get the removal of troops from Hungary. So Khrushchev reluctantly accepted these reforms. So he, he doesn't want to really, but he, he, he does get rid of the troops. However, on the 1st of November 1956, Naj announced that Hungary would be leaving the Warsaw Pact. And this is a step too far. So Khrushchev is not going to accept this. So this could set a precedent and other Eastern European countries might want to do the same. So we could see the breaking up of the Warsaw Pact. And, and Khrushchev is, is a relatively new leader. This would be a significant sign of weakness. So on the 4th of November, Soviet troops invade Hungary and crushed the uprising, killing around 20,000. We know that 200,000 flee to Hungary and they replace it with a uh, Naj, who gets killed, remember, obviously, a couple of years later, with a new leader, Kada. What it shows is that Khrushchev hopes it's going to serve as a warning to other satellite states that any threat to Soviet security would be dealt with brutally. So any, any of these countries with any idea of leaving the Warsaw Pact, think again. Now, what the consequences of it, there's two major consequences, really. The first is that many Hungarians had expected the USA to support them. Remember, the USA in 1947 had said they were going to contain communism, stop the spread of communism. However, what this shows is that Eisenhower is only prepared to send US troops to prevent the spread of communism. He's not going to interfere with countries that are already under kind of the communist rule, He's, all these Warsaw Pact countries, because he knows that that both sides have now got nuclear capability and this could trigger a nuclear war. So it shows that the, the USA are going to be very reluctant to deal with these countries in this sphere of influence. We see this again, don't we, when we get the Prague Spring in 1968. Second consequence is it strengthens Khrushchev's position in the Warsaw Pact. He knows now, the countries know that Khrushchev, despite him claiming that he was going to have kind of more reforms is, is going to actually be exactly the same and Khrushchev as a relatively new leader in Moscow this gives him strength it shows his confidence and it and, and it secures his position and therefore he feels more confident in dealing with the USA and standing up to the USA. Now in terms of the importance for the development of the Cold War so first importance we know that Khrushchev has criticised Stalin's approach to the Warsaw Pact countries um, and off this, this seemed to be a change of uh, direction for the USSR. And people thought, oh, maybe the countries are going to start getting on better again. But actually, it showed that Khrushchev was going to be pretty much exactly the same as, as Stalin. Um, and therefore, the relationship doesn't improve at all. Actually, it continues this strained relationship between the, the two sides. And we get this clear division between East and West. Second importance is it. It shows that the USA, despite claiming they're going to try and uphold these democratic freedoms, are reluctant to actually get involved. So the United Nations is, is discredited. The USA doesn't come off looking great after this. Khrushchev's only been in power for two years, so he needed to show the strength of leadership, and, and he does that. So any hope in the thaw of the Cold War ended, and the poor relationship continued. We, we see, for example, the construction of the Berlin Wall um, a few years later. And, and again, the USA, while obviously criticising it, don't directly get involved. 